Coming up today on Keys to Kingdom Living. If folks can't hear the voice of the Lord, it's not that the Lord isn't speaking clearly and distinctly. It's that his people are not tuned in and listening to what God is saying to them by his spirit. You must be willing to be diligent seekers of the Lord. He said, seek me diligently and I will reward those who do seek me diligently. Jeremiah said, seek him while he may be found and call on him while he is near. You've got to spend time with the lover of your soul if you want to get to know his voice and recognize it when the demons of hell come knocking at your door so that their voices and their threats won't drown out your ability to hear what the Spirit is saying to you to tell you not to respond to the demons and devils knocking on your door trying to destroy your family and home. You'll be still and know the salvation of the Lord because you will recognize the Spirit of God. And when he speaks, peace comes even in the midst of the storm. Can I get a witness? I bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for tuning in to the program today. We're bringing you a brand new message. It is entitled, There is a Distinct Sound. Jesus used the term in the Gospels, and then it is used again in the book of the Revelation of Christ. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. There is a distinct sound that is going out from the heart of God through the Spirit of God, and people that have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying are picking up on what God's doing in these last days. Get out the Word, go with me, and let's hear this powerful message. Tonight is a night of fire and power and God's glory that's going to be released into the heavenlies. And if you have your Bibles, turn to 1 Kings 18.36. We're going to hear about there is a distinct sound. Verse 36. Israel is in a drought for three and a half years. Israel has been in Baal worship. And God says there's time for a showdown on Mount Carmel. And Elijah invites the king to come up, the false prophets, the prophets of Baal, and Israel. And they're going to have a prayer gathering between the worshipers of God and the worshipers of Baal. And we're going to see what happens when this showdown takes place. There's a showdown that has taken place for the soul of this nation. And after they had done all that they had done, it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, and I am your servant, and that I have done all these things at your what? He had heard the voice of the Lord. He obeyed the word of the Lord, and now he's praying back to God, telling him, I've accomplished everything you have told me to do. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you are the Lord God and that you have turned their hearts back to you again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and wood and the stones and licked the dust and it licked up the water that was in the trench. Now when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. And Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal. Do not let one of them escape. So they seized them. And Elijah brought them down to Brook Kishon and executed them there. Then Elijah said to Ahab, Watch what he's about to say by the Spirit of God. Go up eat and drink for there is a what there is a sound of abundance of rain so Ahab went up to eat and drink and Elijah went to the top of Mount Carmel and he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees and he said to his servant go up now look toward the sea so he went and looked and behold there is nothing and seven times he said, go again. 
after the Lord had turned the hearts of his people away from Baal worship, and they repented, God caused Elijah to hear a very specific and distinct sound. It wasn't just any sound, but it was distinct. So distinct, in fact, that he recognized what he heard. How in tune or in sync are you with the Spirit of God? When you hear the Lord and his voice speaking to you, is it clear or does it sound muffled to you, distorted? It reminds me of the man that Jesus prayed for that was blind. And he says, do you see? He says, I see men as trees walking. And Jesus had to touch him again. There's no accident that Jesus had to touch him twice because that is a spiritual principle in the Word of God. God can save you and you still not be able to see spiritually because you got the things of the flesh and the flesh will cause us to be distorted in our spiritual perception, our spiritual hearing, and our spiritual understanding. And Jesus had to touch him again. What the Spirit of God is saying tonight is that God's about to touch his people again so that clarity can come forth and you will be able to clearly hear what the Spirit is saying, but you've got to be willing to lay your idols down. The sound did not, listen, the, the sound did not hit the spiritual ears of Elijah until the hearts of the people were turned back to God. Our sin stops the prophets from hearing what God is saying. Because if he speaks the word, and the, the word does not fall on good soil, then the people that turn their back on that word are going to fall under judgment because they did not receive the word that God sent to them because their hearts were hardened. Can I get a witness? God waits sometimes on certain words because we're not ready to receive it. Jesus said, I have many things for you to hear, uh, disciples, but you're not ready. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will anoint you. He will empower you and you will have grace upon you to receive the words of truth in the season that I have for you to receive them and you will walk in them and you will know me and I will know you. But God would not speak, release the sound of the abundance of rain until the hearts of the people were turned back to him. God refused in Exodus when he appeared in a burning bush to Moses to call him out of being out of his past a fugitive a murderer on the run and God his presence appears in that burning bush and, and Moses is catching this with his peripheral and he says I will turn aside now to see why this bush is on fire but it is not consumed God would not speak to Elijah uh, uh, to Moses until after he had turned and put his attention on where God was. It's very difficult. It may seem impossible to hear clearly from the Lord when someone or something else is vying for your heart's attention. God does not compete. God completes. It was no coincidence that it was after the Jews repented that God allowed his prophet to hear the sound of an abundance of rain. There was something very special about the sound of rain because Israel had been basically shut down for three and a half years during this intense drought. The blessing of rain was now returning upon Israel because Israel had returned to the Lord. When we return back to God in America, the blessings of God are going to return back to America. Yeah. Did not God say if we would humble ourselves and pray and seek his face and, besides pray, turn from our own wicked ways as Christians, that he would hear our prayers, forgive our sins, and the last thing he would what? He will heal our land. God removed the plague of drought from the land of Israel when the Jews removed Baal out of their hearts. There is, there is no coincidence. One thing caused the other thing to happen. When you 
turn away from sin. Blessings of God. When you turn to God with your whole heart, the blessings of God will come upon you. And if you'll stay connected to the vine, the blessings will overtake you and you will be a witness of God's power, God's grace, and God's goodness to the people in your family, to the people who used to know you when you were, were browned in sin. God's glory is going to come on your house. God's presence and blessings are going to come upon your life because you turn away from death and you receive the only eternal life that can only be found in Jesus Christ and the life of God attracts the blessings of God. Can I get a witness? It's time for the church of the living God to set our hearts like a flint on the presence of God and let this world go on down. After Elijah heard the sound in the spirit, he instructed his servant to look over toward the sea. But his servant didn't see anything in the natural. Elijah heard something that he could not see. You hear a sound, and you look around to see what's happening, and you see nothing. When we operate by the flesh, though, we do just the opposite of what Elijah did by the Spirit. We see something in the natural that moves us, sways us, impacts us, threatens us. And what do we do? We speak it out our mouths. Guess what happened to me today? Guess what's going on in the economy today? Guess what's going on in Washington today? And we start rehearsing that and reciting that, one right after the other, and we're spreading that throughout the nation. This is how Satan gets Christians to speak his will in the earth. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and the Bible said, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Another translation says, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love to talk will reap the consequences. 1 Corinthians 14. Verse 6. Paul speaking to the church of Corinth, and he says, Now, brethren, if I come to you speaking with tongues, what shall, it, what shall I profit you unless I speak to you either by revelation, by knowledge, by prophesying, or by teaching? Even things without life, talking about instruments, whether flute or harp, when they make a sound, unless they make a distinction in the sounds, how will it be known what is piped or played? For if the trumpet makes an uncertain sound, who will prepare for battle? There's so much confusion in the body of Christ right now. And people don't, they know things are hard. They know things are getting worse. They know darkness is covering the earth and gross people, the people, gross darkness, the people. But there, it's like there, there's no execution. There's no follow through. There's no plan. So likewise you, unless you utter by the tongue words easy to understand, how will it be known what is spoken? For you will be speaking into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of languages in the world, and none of them is without significance. Therefore, if I do not know the meaning of the language, I shall be a foreigner to him who speaks, and he who speaks will be a foreigner to me. A lot of voices in the earth right now. And when they clamor, it's like a, a racket. But when God speaks through his prophets, his apostles, his pastors, teachers, and evangelists, it's a symphony. It flows together because it's one spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Without truth, clarity cannot exist. What is going on right now in America because truth is told to take an exit? Confusion is coming up on the people. Whatever isn't truth is a lie. 
And that lie, or those lies, confuse people because Satan is a liar, and he's the father of lies, and he is also the author of confusion. So when you take truth out of the equation and you allow opinions of man, doctrines of devils, to start replacing the truth, it will cause confusion in the camp. And that's exactly what Satan intended for it to happen. A, a confused army is not an army that can be a threat. The truth, listen, the truth of God's Word must stand on its own or it won't come across to the hearers with clarity and distinction. The flute, the harp, they have to make distinct sounds. You've got to understand the language of the person that you're listening to or it will only confuse you. The truth must stand on its own. Meaning, if we mix the flesh, our will, with the Word of God, it will alter the intended direction of the truth that has gone forth and caused people to go astray. Just by adding a little flesh to the message. Because the truth, get this, will hit the mark every time. But when you put the flesh in the mix, it will cause the truth to be altered and it will send people off course. God has placed his fivefold ministers to lead his church according to Ephesians chapter 4 that we should no longer be children. We have many teachers, many instructors, Paul says, but we have very few fathers. Fathers will hold children's feet to the fire. Ch uh, fathers will cause children to grow up. That's why fathers are not celebrated like mothers. <laughs> Go to the post office. On Mother's Day week and weekend, they're inundated with cards. Go to prisons. They're inundated with cards. Go on Father's Day weekend or Father's Day week. This is, this is a proven fact, y'all. Very few cards are sent, especially to prisoners, from prisoners to fathers. So he has placed the fivefold minister over the body of Christ to grow us up from being children so that we're no longer tossed to and fro by these ministers that want to add themselves to the Word of God to enhance the taste so that it will savor better in your mouth. And it will cause people to become tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by trickery of men and cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But we're not that way when you're to teach the truth of God unadulterated. We speak the truth in love that we may grow up in all things into him who is the head Christ Jesus. If a minister has heard clearly and is speaking by the Spirit of God, people who are drawn to that particular minister will hear the voice of God within the, vo within the voice of that servant. Let me say that again. If a minister has heard clearly from the Spirit of God and speaks only what the Spirit has told them to speak, people who are drawn to that minister will hear not the voice of the servant of God, they will hear the voice of God in his voice or her voice. It is for this reason that God's Spirit has come up on and has anointed the ministers with God's power as we speak. They are speaking on God's behalf, not on man's behalf. And God's Spirit will bear witness with those who are listening that they are in fact hearing from God and not from man. Can I get a witness? Amen. The ministry that God has called me to has a certain sound. And those who are able to recognize that sound, like a flute or a harp, has a distinct sound. And those that recognize or are able to recognize that sound that goes forth from here as being from God and bears witness with their spirit, they will be drawn by the word that goes forth from my spirit and mouth into their hearing. The voice. The voice is distinct. Adam and Eve, after they, they sinned, they heard the voice of the Lord God walking. 
I find that interesting that a voice walks. They heard the voice walking. It was distinct. They recognized it, y'all. You recognize the voice. There was a sound from heaven in, in Acts as of a mighty rushing wind. But it was the Spirit of God invading the earthly realm to ignite the church of the living God on fire to be witnesses of Christ to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. There has to come a clear and concise sound so that people who hear that will recognize the sound and may not understand all that is coming out. Because you've got to have spiritual ears. I don't get all you're saying, brother, but I, I, I hear what you're saying. You'll get that going home. God intended ministry to be this way from the very beginning. But man's flesh, pride, and man's agendas have gotten into the mix and clouded the waters. Now we have to rely on the Holy Spirit as listeners to help us sort through and filter out the flesh of the ministers so that we can decipher what God is really saying through them to us. Don't you just love that? I don't. Tell me what you're saying, speak it plainly, and get it over with. You've got to have a distinct sound, and God's voice has a very distinct sound. Turn with me to John chapter 10. I'm giving you scripture, back it up. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber, but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper, or the porter, King James says, opens, and the sheep hear his voice. Now I want you to imagine you're in this, this town or this village, and they have this big corral that belongs to the town or village, and all the shepherds are transporting their sheep to be sold. And as they come into this village or city, they let their sheep go into that corral while they may go bed for the night or eat or whatever they have to do in that. And so the porter stays there and watches over the sheep to protect them. And then when they are ready, the shepherds are ready to leave that village and go on, they will call out to their sheep and only their sheep will respond to their shepherd's voice. The other will stay there in that corral. And they call sheep dumb. <laughs> to him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them what he leads them where out. he leads them where out. he's leading us out it doesn't matter where you come from it matters that you're coming out and when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. Why? For they know his voice. Yet they will, not, will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. <laughs> what I want to ask is this. If, if sheep are dumb and they know their sheep's vo their shepherd's voice and Christians have the spirit of God in us and, and uh, hirelings and false prophets can get up and do a little signs and wonders and people will follow them like they were the best thing from heaven and they have no character, they have no integrity, they mix the flesh in, carnality in with the word and pollute and adulterate the word and they follow them when Jesus said, a stranger they will not follow. So that tells me they're not hearing by the Spirit of God. They're listening out of the lust of their flesh and that hireling has attached his carnality to their carnality and he's luring them into his deceitful web and will devour them and destroy them and when the wolf comes to eat them alive the hurling will leave them high and dry and broke and busted you better appreciate a, a shepherd that will lay down their life for you there is so much left of this message I hate to cut it short but I promise you 
be sure and tune in next week for the powerful conclusion, and you will be glad that you did because the Lord through His Holy Spirit, laid out scripture after scripture to back up everything that the Holy Spirit had given me to share with you all so that we would know that it was God's heart and not out of me. You see, that's what's so good about being a servant of Christ. His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, bears witness with our spirit that what we hear is from God and not from man. God will not anoint the flesh of man. He will not anoint the agenda of man, but he will certainly confirm and anoint his holy word. And I, I believe that that has happened to you today. You've heard what the Spirit of God is saying. He's been dealing with your heart. Let me ask you, you're a Christian, but are you walking in the will of God? Are you in tune with the Spirit of God? And today, after you've heard the first part of this message, do you feel like God is calling you into a closer and more intimate and personal walk with him? If he is, then cast all your care on him. Submit your heart, not just to him as Savior, but to Jesus as Lord of your life. And he will lead and guide you, and you will experience a freedom and a spiritual authority come in your life that heretofore you've not been able to. God's doing great things in our midst. So many things God has been doing in this ministry over the last year and a half through the pandemic. Many financial miracles. We were able to feed over 500 people in Uganda because people gave over $14,000 in a matter of about two weeks. During the pandemic, while the church was shut down, God was able to also allow us to buy new camera equipment for high definition so that the gospel of the kingdom can go out with excellence on the TV stations that God has allowed us the privilege to air these programs on. We're so grateful to the station managers and owners for this opportunity to share the bread of life with you all. And God has done so much in 2021. One of those things is God laid it on my heart earlier this year to develop and build an app that would help reach people anywhere in the nations of the world through internet. And we're so excited that World Harvest Church North app today is a reality. If you have an Android device, a Roku device, or iPhone, or Kindle, you can download the app, World Harvest Church North. Look for it on your app store. Be a part of what God's saying and doing through this ministry. We're so grateful to hear from so many of you that have called in. Uh, you've had prayer requests. You've had praise reports. We agree, as the intercessors and myself, for these prayer requests that come in. Let us know how we can agree with you, stand with you, and see God move mountains out of your life and out of your family's lives. We know through Christ that we are more than a conqueror. As I get ready to leave you today, I want to encourage you. If you've been watching Keys to Kingdom Living for a while, and you know that we're a ministry of integrity, that we are about preaching only the unadulterated Word of God, and you'd like to take that next step, become a partner to help us get the gospel of the kingdom out to the nations of the world, go to our brand new website, whcnorth.org. There you can give safely and securely, and all proceeds that come through the television ministry go right back out to help with our television ministry cost. God is so faithful. He is good. So get your eyes on Him if they're not, and watch what God does in your life. Take care, and God bless.